Hello and welcome to Unseen Universe. Hi guys, everybody alright? I'm Mitch and I hope everyone's having a great day today. So, what we're going to be talking about today? Dirt. Good old dirt. I have lots and lots of lovely dirt here and I'm going to use it to put in various tubs of shapes and sizes. And yes, that right, I'm not just going to keep dirt, I am actually going to put some lovely little creepy crawlies inside here. So, first of all I want to give a good shout out to Exotic Empire and Tom Marsh, he's a cracking guy, just a small family business just about getting going well I think he's been going for a while but I think he's wanting to take it to the next level now so that's Exotic Empire on Facebook give him a nice shout out a look in specializes in isopods roaches scorpions um, and I think he's going to be doing a bunch of other stuff as well I'm not entirely sure what so you'll have to check him out Exotic Empire on Facebook give him a shout see what he's got he's a cracking lad so uh, yeah anyway I met him um, the other week and I picked up a few bits and pieces from him so uh, what we're gonna have in these lovely dirt filled pots I wonder so we're gonna start off in this smallest the smallest pot here we're gonna have Tricotina tormentosa which um, is a species of um, dwarf wood lice so I'm gonna put them in this one because they I've got a couple of hundred of those and uh, I'm just gonna get them growing up nicely I'll show you them in a little while in this one we're going to have Porcelio uh, Levis which is a dairy cow isopod um, absolutely gorgeous little species that one um, we'll have a closer look at those later in this one we're going to have some uh, Starle um, Horida which is a, a assassin bud they are the lovely black and orange ones if you've seen my Facebook page before, you'll know that I have actually kept these before, but um, I managed to pick up some more because I lost my colony that I had before. I am planning on um, getting those going again, so uh, and they're absolutely gorgeous, but really aggressive towards their prey as well, so they're absolutely loads of fun to have and keep. So, and finally, in this rather lovely, shiny and absolutely beautiful vivarium, uh, this is one of the Unseen Universe variums that I'm selling on the website. So it's got uh, all the lovely features, side, top and rear ventilation, top opening lid and on the front we can see it's got the uh, thermo hygrometer readout which is always good. So in this one, rather lovely vivarium, I'm, I'm going to be putting the Armadillidium um, Kluge which is an absolutely beautiful um, isopod um, so I want to get a colony of those going as well. So without further ado, shall we... Uh, get them filled up with soil and get going from there. So this uh, substrate is uh, from uh, Tom at uh, Exotic Empire and he uh, he formulates and uh, creates his own lovely concoction. Um, I used to do the same but now I'm just a little bit lazy so I just buy it from somebody else who uh, goes to the trouble of putting together something quite splendid and perfect for your lovely critters. So this is his isopod substrate and it's a uh, composition of peat compost, coir, um, crushed dried leaves, sphagnum moss, fine wood, hardwood, bark uh, and then some uh, also some calcium carbonate. Um, all this mixed up, chopped up together gives uh, a lovely substrate and uh, is just what your little critters need to live on. So uh, I have actually mixed the substrate with uh, some slightly bigger chunks of, um, of rotting wood. Um, I've also added a bunch of springtails, mixed it all up nicely to make this master mix and then I have split them out into these four tubs. Got a little bit left there so uh, I've got some more assassin bugs coming very very soon so keep an eye out for that I'll, uh, and I'll be using that for, uh, for those little beauties. Right, that's that. Right, 
Right then, so I've got my uh, custom made awesome substrate for the uh, assassin bugs and the um, couple of species of ice pods that I've got. So now all I need to do is um, add a little bit of cork bark. Um, I've got some, I've got a little bit of, let's see, I've got quite a few bits and pieces here. So I've got some uh, some naturally rotting, rotting bits of uh, branch and wood here. So I'm going to put that just flat in the, uh, in the isopod enclosure. I'm going to do the same, add a couple of pieces of that, just to like, you know, mix things up a bit and then I'm also gonna lay a nice piece of flat cork bark because they'll love they'll love to hide underneath that um, so that's for the dairy cows I've got another natural piece of stick here I'm gonna put that in this one um, this is for the uh, the dwarf wood lice I'm gonna put another couple of another couple of small pieces in there in a couple of flat pieces so they can all huddle together and they do like to huddle together and um, and hide under flat pieces of bark and various other things so I've got lots of these lovely little flat pieces to put in just to uh, just so they can have a little huddle up and get together you know we all love to get together well most people do um, I don't, <laughs> but uh, not that I don't like people, I just, uh, you know, I'm just not the overly social type. But I love speaking to you guys, of course. <laughs> right then, so I'm going to break up a couple more pieces here, just stick them flat down for the dairy cows and the, uh, and just overlap a few pieces. There, plenty in there you see. So that's those two done. Now I'm going to do the same for the uh, for the others. What was it I was going to add there? Uh, so I've got absolutely tons, you can't see it in the picture but I've got absolutely tons of cork bark flats and tubes and arcs and all kinds of things, sticks. So the uh, Armadillo deer and Kluge, uh, they are going to go in the, in this one, in the lovely one if you remember. So I'm going to pretty much do the same in there. I'm going to add a couple of sticks, just looking for the appropriate size sticks. I'm going to add a, a, a nice flat piece of cork bark. Oh yeah, here we go. That's a nice piece there, put that in there. It's got quite a lot of depth as well, height and depth and it's going to uh, make an just like you know mixes up the landscape as well which is always nicer for us to look at as well you know practical for the for the little creepy crawlies but good for us as well put a few pieces in there uh, and then a couple of small small rotting pieces of stick and bark what we got here we go that's a good one um, and then another piece there so this is for the uh, Harida, the assassin buds, and what I'm going to do in these, um, as well as, I'm not just going to place flat pieces of cork bark, because um, um, even though they look like they're hidey holes and hide, they, they, also like, um, they also like the vertical strips as well, so we're uh, going to create more of a uh, vertical landscape, um, as well as uh, a couple of flat pieces for them to get under as well um, but, I'm all, but I know they like to climb as well so I'll just put a couple of flat bits in there I'm running out of small pieces actually so da -da -da -da. And so I'll just keep piling that up because you can't have too many I don't think anyway Lovely, lovely, coming together nice now that, just keep, just keep, lots of love, lots and lots of crevices and hidey holes, do you like that, that's what you need, um, you know, you want them to feel safe, comfortable, I mean I know it's not 
nat nature and nat I know it's not a natural environment, but you've got to help them out as much as possible, man. You know, if you're going to keep lovely little creatures that live outside and you're going to keep them inside, you've got to be, you know, you're responsible. You've got to look after them. So you've got to do your best to uh, make it good and make it nice. There you go. Look, look at that. It's coming up nicely. That is now. I'll put that. I'm going to put that in there. I'm finding lots of lovely small pieces now in bottom of the tub. That's great. Right. Right, awesome. I think we're ready. So, I, uh, I'll i get rid of the uh, cork bar. Oh, the cork bar got absolutely tons still. But excellent. It always comes in handy, man. Always. Stuff that to one side. Right, so. There we have it. All the enclosures are almost ready. I'm tempted also to uh, put a bit of moss down one side of each one just to create, you know, like a bit of a humidity um, gradient. So I might, I might dig out the uh, moss that I've got and just stuff it down one side so I can constantly keep that drenched so there's like a gradient so that they can you know they can move around in and out of the uh, the more humid areas and the drier areas um, at their own will really okie dokie right I'm back and um, I've decided um, for now I'm not going to go with the uh, with the moss idea um, I'm just going to stick with the uh, with the substrate and the cork bark and the sticks and uh, the rotting wood and all that jazz, all the good stuff. Um, so, first thing I want to do before I actually put anything in these is um, is uh, hydrate those bad boys, give them all a good spray. So, uh, let's do that. Everything's nice and hydrated. The uh, isopod ones, I've added a little bit more water than um, than the for the assassin bugs, just because I want to make them uh, really, really moist. Lots and lots of humidity, um, just to really get that going and absorb all that lovely moisture and goodness, all the nutrients and stuff in there. So uh, yeah, so let's get cracking, shall we? And uh, right then, let's get these bad boys into these enclosures, shall we? So first, we've got the tricotina. Tomentosa. So these are a species of dwarf white isopod. Um, I've actually got some grey um, wood louse in here as well. So there's a mixture of grey wood louse and um, and the dwarf whites. You see those in there. Those bad boys are going in this one here. So we'll just tip those in there. Just tip them in there, shall we? Crack on. There's actually a bunch of moss in the in with all these anyway as well, so uh, that's going to help with the humidity. So sorted. I'm just going to leave that. Let them sort it all out. Porcelainite prinosus is a crustacean, more commonly known as the plum woodlouse. It is a cosmopolitan woodlouse that is native to Europe and is suspected to consist of 10 very closely related subspecies. They can reach approximately 12 mm in size and can have a range of coloration from grey to purplish brown with a characteristic blue-grey bloom. The body colour contrasts against the long whitish legs and the pale annulations on the antennae. The body has an obvious stepped outline allowing rapid movement. The species carries Wolbachia endosymbionts, which is an alpha proteobacterium that is known to modify the reproduction of their crustacean hosts by inducing cytoplasmic incompatibility or feminization. That's them done. So next we've got the uh, Porcelio 
the vase or the dairy cow isopod. There we go. There's only a couple few you can see on top there, but there's plenty inside, I assure you. So we'll chuck them in there as well. There you go, look. Look at all them. You can see them, look. Lovely. Fantastic. You can see them all scuttling around. They're all just going to hide away in the nooks and crannies. Oh, that's beautiful for them, that is. Fantastic. Ocelio lavis, commonly called the dairy cow isopod, is a species of woodlouse in the genus Porcelio. As the species epithet Liveus, as well as the vernacular name Swift Woodlouse, suggests, the species is capable of quick bursts of speed when provoked. This species of woodlouse is distinctively large, appearing up to 20 mm long with a smooth dorsal surface. The males can be identified by their long, spear-shaped uropods. It is commonly kept as a pet due to its somewhat easy care requirements and the variety of colour morphs available. The species is easy to keep and can be easily established in a terrarium within a few weeks. Porcelio lavis was recorded in Britain in the 13th century, but it likely originated in North Africa. The species is also found in North and South America Western Asia, Japan, Australia, and some Pacific Islands, and is found under rocks and fallen logs in damp areas, and is otherwise rarely encountered. They directly develop from yolky eggs, with both the eggs and juvenile developing within a brood pouch, called a marsupium, until the first juvenile stage. The use of the marsupium eliminates the need for there to be an external water source for early development, since it is filled with fluid from the mother isopod. This is considered some of the most extensive parental care among terrestrial arthropods. We'll do the uh, armadillidium, Kluge. Can't quite see it very well there, can you? But uh, here we go. So again, they're all hiding away, but they're in there. I assure you, pour them in there. That's it. That's them done. So some of them have rolled up, protecting themselves. You're not going to be able to see them with the camera there, but yeah, I can see a few scuttling around. So they're going to. Uh, get themselves busy, make themselves at home, fantastic! Armadillidium klugi is a lesser known rare Balkan Dalmatia based species of woodlouse, most distinguished by its coloration which resembles the red markings of the Mediterranean black widow. This is probably a kind of mimicry to ward off predators that mistake the harmless animal for a venomous spider. Due to its red, yellow or white spotting it is often called the clown isopod. Insects and isopod enthusiasts usually encounter them being sold as A. Kluge Montenegro or variations thereof. The maximum length of A. Kluge is 21mm. Unlike the typical black colour of the dorsal plates of most armadillium species, the base coloration of A. Kluge is greyish brown and has three rows of white dots running front to back. As they age, the centre row turns yellow. These pale spots are for mimicry of the Mediterranean Black Widow, which has similar markings. The range of Armadillidium flugi lies along the coastline of the Adriatic Sea, spanning from Croatia to Montenegro. The majority of records are clustered in Dalmatia, in the northern end of its distribution, but specimens have been reported in South Albania and West Greece where it is found under stones and in crevices. And then finally, the one I know you've all been waiting for, it's the assassin bug. So these are actually, these are the uh, Sistali uh, Horrida. And they are very tiny, little babies look. Can't see, you can see them there look, there you go. Chuck them in there. 
I might just leave that in there actually let them uh, yeah I don't want to uh, I'm not going to start flicking them and bashing them I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rest that in there and let them uh, make their own way out so I've got two two tubs here there's a couple of malts in there look you can see a couple of malts so again there's one or two that I've malted, so they're a little bit bigger. Again, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put them in there like that, and let them find their own way. So you can't see them yet. Citala horida is an insect in the assassin bug genus Citala. It is commonly called the horrid king assassin bug or giant spiny assassin bug. This species is endemic to tropical Western Africa. From Togo to Cameroon. P. horida can reach a body length of 3 to 5 centimetres and is the largest species of assassin bug in the world. These large and sturdy built insects are characterised by a relatively narrow neck, an elongated head and a rigid, prominent, segmented tubular mouthparts or proboscis, also called rostrum. Antennae are long and thin. The basic colour of the body is black with a very prominent crown of thorns on the thorax and have red and black warning colours on the edge of the abdomen. On the hemolytra are present a few red markings. Legs are rather long with red and black femurs and completely red tibia. This species represents an evident sexual dimorphism. In fact, the underside of the female's abdomen is completely smooth while the males at the end of the abdomen have a round outgrowth. Females lay their eggs in substrates a few weeks after mating. The incubation may last four to six weeks. The young insects at birth measure about five millimeters. They have a red thorax, an abdomen, and yellow legs. These terrestrial ambush predators live hidden in the timber or dead trees during the day, coming out at night to feed on their prey, that they kill with their venom injected by their rigid rostrum. They can also spray a noxious fluid. 